Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be working on replacing the transmission fluid on the ML350. Right now I've got the car on the ramps and I've got the jack stands for extra protection in case it just fails a roll zone or whatever. It's a heavy vehicle, don't want to get stuck under it. So most of the times you see people what they do is they just drop out the whole thing and make a royal mess but I don't stand for messy jobs so what I've done is before I actually started cranking on this drain plug I've heated it up with a heat gun and then just gave it a good crank and it all starts to come loose now you're ready for the drain Here it comes. Dirty, gross transmission oil. It stinks. I don't think it's ever been changed. And I think it got my camera slightly too. Okay, so we'll wait for it to drain and then we're going to take off all these Torx bolts and drop the pan. I am looking to change the filter and the rubber seal and also the electrical plug that usually causes a lot of problems as well. Because over time the plug, I'll, I'll put the camera there later and I'll show you which plug I'm talking about that plug is notorious for causing bad shifting once you get oil and dirt in it and it was like 20 bucks online by Dorman and we'll just switch that and hopefully they'll help with the shifting issues of this thing okay guys so what I've done now is I'll put the plug back on I don't want the mess going everywhere now we're gonna use t30 and just start undoing these pan bolts and take the pan down seems to be six of these so we'll undo the six first and go from there yeah, I think the oil has never been changed it's pretty gross smells burned and it's super black so I think the previous owner kept it with the theme of not ever changing any fluids Everything for him was life proof by Mercedes. Okay. You gotta be careful on the corners. You got these bolts with special grooves in them to hold the pan. So remember, they all go on the corners. What I mean, when I say the grooves, I'll show you what I mean. It's, uh, this kind of lip that's cut into it and that's where the pan siding goes and it just hangs on to it Okay guys, once the pan bolts are off, just be very careful when you're tipping it out, lean it back at the very end of the pan and let all the excessive oil come out. As you can see, there's still a lot of oil sitting at the bottom of the pan, even after you drained it with the drain plug. And be careful that the tray is gonna get stuck between the filter and the transmission cooler hose so be wary of that before you can cause a slosh and a spill 
it's just a bit tricky to get it out not super hard just a little bit of technique that's all okay the next thing to tackle is the transmission filter as you can see it's got still a lot of oil sitting in there the best way i figured is to slowly pull the o-ring out it's held by a click lock and an o-ring so tip it towards its opening at the very back end and just drain it slowly so all the fluid comes out without a mess Okay guys, once the pan's off, now just grab the shop towel and wipe off all the excessive oil that's on the conductor plate or any other equipment, including the edges where the seal's gonna seat. Okay guys, when you're changing the oil, it's a good idea to order the connector for the solenoid that goes right up here by the catalytic converter. I'll have to see if the camera is actually getting any of this. Oh, there we go. Is it? Yeah, there we go. So what we do with this connector is just give it a twist and it comes off. You can just see there's a there's a groove lock on it. So now it's a matter of grabbing a, I think it's a size six uh, socket that goes inside and we'll undo it, but I'll set the camera up for that and then we'll show you. Okay guys, so what we've decided to do first is put the oil pan back together put the new filter on and then tackle that plug because otherwise the access is very limited because of this oil pan under it. We put some oil around the o-ring so it actually goes on and doesn't make the o-ring come off and it goes in. It should just click in, put it on. Where's the click? Sitting nice and tidy there. Okay guys, so the Filter is in. Now we're gonna go clean the pan quickly and put the seal, the rubber seal on and then put the pan back on. So the pan just had basic sludge in it. That's a magnetic uh, catching thing that sits on the tray and if there's any bits that came off, the shreddings, this catches it. But this looks actually fairly clean. It was really sludgy, dirty oil on that. Everything looks okay. Okay hey guys, the pan's all clean. I'll grab a brand new. And it just fits on into the grooves perfectly. Alrighty, that's good. Now we're gonna put the pan back on. Okay guys, we got the we got the filter ready, we got the pan ready, and now one last time, just wipe everything with a clean towel so the seal is perfect. There's no debris on it. Just wipe up the excessive dirty fluid. You'll probably have to do this a few times, I guess, to make it all nice and tidy. Okay, once you got the pan holding there guys, just put the middle ones on first. Okay, put down there. Mm -hmm. Okay guys, so what we've done for now is put five of the bolts on. Hang on, I'll hold the camera like this. Just to hold the pan in place and it just doesn't drip and makes a mess. And now we're gonna be tackling this solenoid here. So we gotta get in there. And I don't know if you can see, but this one's got a screw in there. So we gotta take that screw out and then replace that casing and stop that leak. And after that, We'll torque these bolts and then put some fresh oil in it. We've got to measure the old oil to see how much came out. And then we're going to put the exact same amount and then use the dipstick and go from there. Okay guys, once the plug is out of the connector, we can use a 7mm socket and just uh, slowly loosen it. You want to be careful when you're taking this out, guys, because it's a very brittle plug.
plastic you don't want to break anything and then have to fish it later on and watch out for the o-ring that's in there and also try to clean all the excessive oil that's left in there while you're at it it's okay now to seat the plug be very patient with it just pay attention to the locking tab before you take it out to see which position it was in before you removed it and then don't push on the pins just make sure you slowly set them in and then go from there use a flashlight to check it because if you push those pins and bend them then you got a bigger job at your hands of replacing the conductor plate okay guys so the plugs all done sorry I couldn't film it because it became real pain to put that plug on you really had to push hard on the actual plug to make it seated so we can actually catch the first thread and then from there onwards it was somewhat easy and I don't know what the torque specs are on that screw but we just hand tightened it because I really don't want to bust that one out if you bust that screw that means you've got to need a new conductor plate and now the pan is put back on it was fairly simple process just put a new seal on specs are eight newton meters for the drain plug which we already hit and i'll adjust i'll adjust my torque wrench to six foot pounds it's 5.9 foot pounds for these screws are the bolts that actually hold the pan and you have to start in the middle and keep tightening them until they go six foot pounds or 5.9 okay that's tight enough and then go the other one okay now go to the bottom Okay, after this, we're gonna go up to the top section. I'll start on the driver's side first. Okay, that's tight enough. And then to the passenger side. Okay, that's it. That's all you need to tighten these things. That plate is actually the plug cover in case you take it off and afterwards can't figure out where did this uh, screw with the plate go. It goes right here. This plate is basically it's a shield for the connector plug. And once it's all tight, that's how it's supposed to look. But right now, we're going to go back and fill the transmission. We've got to measure the dirty oil that came out, see how much it was, and then fill up the fresh fluid so we're okay guys Just so we're slow. running a double funnel and pouring the oil slow. slowly because yeah. slow. yeah. it needs to have some air to drop it down what you can do guys is run a fluid extractor from here and empty the whole transmission in one shot i don't have it but i've got enough fluid sitting there to put in so i'm just going to go the easy route put in three liters now replace it later on drain it measure it and then replace it till all cycles through now it's time to take this puppy off the ramps and then we'll put it on flat surface and then measure it okay guys so now that we've filled up the oil to the capacity we're going to start the SUV and then cycle through the gears for a bit we're going to do reverse for 10 seconds let the fluid cycle through the reverse solenoid and then Go through the neutral for 10 seconds. And then you go through the drive. And then you can go up. For a few seconds just go to the manual shifter cycle through the shifting 
Okay. We'll go through the first gear for 10 seconds, then through the second. And then I'll do it on the camera quickly, but later on you can do it real time. And you go through your third gear. Through your fourth, and then the fifth. And once you're done with that, go back to your parking mode and then turn it off okay guys just wanted to take a quick shot of all the sludge and metal bits that came out this is all from the original transmission fluid at 185,000 k's or 110,000 miles that's from from the transfer cup to measure it mine came out at 3100 milliliters about 3.1 quarts so and the filter itself is dirty as hell inside so just to give you an idea what to expect when you do an oil change, this is how much crap you're getting out of your system. Okay guys, so we've taken this off the ramps and then taken the dipstick out. Wipe it, put it back in. And see where it's at. Okay. It's almost at max level, so I'll drive it for a couple of days and then check it again and then refill it if I have to. Otherwise, put this on. If you got that red seal handy, slap it on. I don't have it, so I'm not gonna put that safety lock on for now. When it does arrive, then we'll go back on. Okay, thanks for watching guys, and if you liked the video, please subscribe. Have a wonderful day. Bye now.